going to speak. And it's my understanding that everybody here is welcome, and we want to hear some input, but we're going to limit it to five people speaking, which are the main people here in the front. And uh, might as well get this show on the road. I'm only coming up to here because I get a lot of paperwork. I know we've addressed this for a year and a half, okay, and I know it hasn't been a very good outcome. And there's been a lot of tug and pull on both sides, and I commend you, Ms. Mr. Hoffner, for reaching out last night, or Tuesday, I guess it was, <coughs> to the Parliament Cat Project. Um, with all due respect, um, the, cat, the Department of Cat Project is a wonderful research source, but there's also state and local laws and federal laws that you also must take into consideration encompassing the entire animal ordinance that currently we have in effect. It is outdated, and I would be more than happy to help the Borough Council just give them the laws and go over with them so you can come up to date with all the ordinances. Currently, I have three other townships that have requested my input on it to give them the laws, the federal and the state laws, so they would not contradict with the laws because currently that's the issue with Ordinance 728. Now, I know we, we've talked a lot about the feeding stations. I know there's another woman that has been cited since then, so I'm taking it that that is also on the table as well. Is that correct? The second, the second woman that was cited, right? So everything is off the table as far as the feeding station. So right now. <clears throat> Currently, okay, yeah. all right. And I know Mr. Costenbader, you and I, or President Costenbader, you and I had discussed briefly in, in the hallway that you wanted to make sure that next week by 4.30 at a certain time that you, you would be willing <coughs> with some of the members <coughs> to it sit be, down. And it be, by 4.30 tomorrow afternoon. Okay. I'd like a day at a time okay. to meet with whoever okay. uh, next week. Okay. Because That's Monday to Friday. Right, okay. and, and that's what I want to make Friday. perfectly clear. We're not the enemies, no, okay? No, I understand that. We believe there has to be rules. We want the rules enforced. We just want humane rules enforced, and we believe that there is accountability that has to be accounted for. And there's a way that, that can do it on both sides. You can have your accountability, you can have the lesser, you know, the problems with the nuisance calls and the complaints, if it is done correctly. And that's what we want to help you do. You all have your expertise as far as treasure or safety and everything else, but you have to realize the main purpose of Ordinance 728 was to address the health and the safety and the welfare of the residents. By TNR, that's actually doing a bigger job than, than everybody's imagining. By law, you don't have to rabies or vaccinate any outdoor cat. Pennsylvania law states that. You don't have to do that. But these women who spend their time trapping cats and inoculating the cats are going above and beyond what the state law requires. So they're actually helping the health and welfare and the safety of the community at large when they do that. So I don't know if you, if you realize that that's not a law, but they're going above and beyond to do that. Many people in this room tonight have fundraised, um, they transport, they trap. We have thousands of man hours in how many years since this original problem was created? And you know it's not a problem that just happened two years ago. This has been a problem for a long time in a lot of jurisdictions. So there are groups of people like us here tonight that are standing up and saying, hey, we created the problem, so now we have to fix it. And ignoring it or pushing it away is not the solution. That's why I, I am ecstatic that you came and, and you made the call to be able to sit down, but we also know that it takes four of you to abolish or amend or make changes to the ordinance. So we're hoping that at least four of you would come to the table to discuss that. Because we can't do anything with just one Can person. Can I answer it, Dr. Sure. Sure. Unfortunately, sure. we can't bring four because then we have to have a public meeting. Well, I think what she's talking about is at a, a full phone council meeting. There needs to be at least 
Right, but yeah, I'm we, saying yeah. when we when we right. meet with the poverty yeah. and the right. project and thing, we can't we, under law we can't right because sunshine, 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 yes. sunshine, 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 sunshine laws. So I get that. So we'll meet right in a group of three with poverty cap project, and then we will share. Yeah, but I, I, I guess what I'm looking for tonight is looking around at the whole borough council. Okay, we've met with one or two or three because you can't break the sunshine laws. I get that. But what I guess I really want is affirmation to the fact that that every council member sitting here is going to take it into consideration. At least can we get that agreement and affirmative answer from the council for that reason? I'll look you in the face and tell you that there is nothing in this town that we can't fix. And I appreciate that. And we're and I applaud and, and that's what all we're hoping for. We believe there there must be accountability. There must be rules. We're on your side for that. And trust me, no one is on your side more than that than me. Because I'm the one that has to go around and clean everything up at the bot at the end of the day. The other thing that has you know me concerned as a law enforcement officer for as a Humane Society police officer is full transparency. I have put in several rights and no requests, which I kind of didn't get any answers. I don't know if your animal control officer has a job description. Does your animal control officer have a job description? I don't know. He responds to uh, calls as directed by the borough office. <coughs> and those calls would encompass 54 and 728, the entire animal ordinance? They may. Well, they may or they may not. It has to be kind of like it either. Have to, it depends on what the circumstances are that he's being asked to look at. Okay. Because when it comes to dog law, there again, there's state laws that says you must have so many, you know, so much education in order to enforce maybe rabies or license or anything like that. And that would be under the police department. So that's something else. I don't want you guys getting in trouble either down the road because you didn't know. And I've been a resident here for 30 years. For 30 years, I dealt with 30, 40, 50 cats. And Fan, um, there had to be at least 30, 40, 50 cats in Marianne Alley at one time. And I could probably pull up the records and the video to prove it. She's down to two. And we have TNR'd that. Lori Sheets is in the office. You have TNR'd. Dana from CCFOA, you have TNR'd. You have TNR'd. Susie, you have TNR'd. Harmon and Cat Project. We've been working on this for 20 years. I myself was a, a retired trapper, neuter, and release for 25 years. I'm too old for that to crawl into the buildings anymore. I'm not doing it. That's why there's the next generation coming through. We want to help stop the problem. As you take notice over at the zinc company, um, have you been over at the zinc company lately? Many cats there as there was originally? It's, it's substantially reduced. Okay. And, and which brings me to another question. Um, you had made the remark that that has been substantially reduced in Palmerton. How is Palmerton Borough making their data, okay, as far as is it just based on the zinc company? Or how has the cat problem since Ordinance 728 been put in place affected or reduced the cat population in Palmerton? How is that measured? I'm not sure what you're talking about, about in Palmerton. I was talking about it, and the numbers have been substantially reduced over at the Zinc Company. It's visibly noticeable that there aren't nearly as many cats there. Okay, so when you made that comment on the media, you were just referring to that one area? Yes. Okay. I, I just wanted to clear that up. Um, I also have very conflicting information, which I'm sure we can straighten out. It's no big deal as far as the number of animals that were trapped and as far as the number of animals um, and the complaints that got. I'm also very concerned because we've never got an answer after three right to no requests that I have put in. There were two cats December 17th, 2017 posted on the borough page. I believe at the time Mr. Philip Bell was the one um, that had trapped those cats. We have to this day, after three right to know requests, have not got an answer. What happened to the cats? I think I've told you on <clears throat> at least one or two occasions, those cats are supposedly on a farm in Bangor. Now, we were, I, nah, I was told they have Alley. 
Pardon? I was told Lehigh Valley. So now it, it and see that's the thing. I don't know. Yeah. And the other thing I would like to, to bring up to the borough's attention, you do realize if you employ or subcontract an animal control officer, the borough is actually, and please look it up or I'll be happy to provide you with that information, you have to keep accountability of the numbers that they're trapping. And where they go. That's a law. That's a state law. And even the skunks and the squirrels and everything else, you have to realize when, if those are not, and I did speak to Mr. Lazo tonight, and I did ask him, are you reporting to Game Commission? And the reason that I'm so concerned about that is because when I take my continuing ed every year, I get the rabies vector number. So if those numbers are not accurately reported to the Department of Agriculture, it's not only affecting me, it's affecting every number that they come out with for my safety on the job that I do and for the job that the trappers do. We need to know that. Not all of us have our rabies tigers. How many of you said trap have your rabies tigers? There's maybe six. <coughs> Pardon? Well, Sir, may I ask who you are? I'm Pastor Larry Vanderbeer. I'm the administrator and founder of the Coalition of Feral Cats that we have out. Okay, thank you. Um, and as far as the ordinance itself, I mean, we can, and what we want to do, and this is our main concern, and this is why everybody has showed up tonight, is we are willing to work with you and have been willing to work with you for a year and a half. And we finally, we want the affirmation that we're gonna try and work together and fix it and make it work. Make it work for the borough as well as the residents. Well, I just got finished telling you there's nothing here that we can't fix. Okay, and I'm glad to hear that because we did not get that until tonight. And I highly respect for you for having a change of heart and a change of mind. And I have the most respect for you, Chris, for making that phone call because that's what we were looking for for the past year and a half. Well, it's not that we haven't reached out to the former cat project here over the years either. We have. And I have reached out many times, and you, Terry, you and I went round and round how many times, and Roger, you and I have too, and I respect you. Whether or not I have to respect, it doesn't matter because I enforce the law. That's what I swore to do. And I want to help you enforce the law as well. Sure. And as long as it doesn't contradict with state law, because as I provided, Mr. Gursky, did you get the emails that I, I sent you? I did, thank you. Did you see from the Pennsylvania Bar Association that they presented to the House of Delegates 102B? I didn't thoroughly read it over, but I have it. Okay. Well, what 102B is, and they introduced that to the House of Delegates in 2017, and they are trying through the Pennsylvania Bar Association, which I've sent, in fact, and I know I've been accused of not giving you enough information, but this is the information in a year and a half that I have sent to borough council members. Okay. Either one, two, or three, whatever. So it's to the point where I can't give you anything else but to sit down, have a rational con conversation with some of my colleagues that we all volunteer with and hope we can come to a satisfiable conclusion to end this and not let them starve. That's why we're here tonight. Well, and, and, I, and I hope it goes that way. I really do. So I, for one, am all for it. I will be available whenever anybody can get together. Do you have the three borough council members that are going to be available, or is it still up in the air? It should be uh, Holly Sell and Chris Hoffner and myself. Okay. And you, you're a school teacher, right? So not during the day. Which, right. it doesn't matter to us. I mean, we're, we're on call 24-7, 365 anyway, but... I myself will accommodate any schedule that needs to be done. And if there's anything you need prior to that meeting and would like to look over, I would be more than happy to make sure you I have it. I have a request. It. Sure. Um, like, uh, that's a house bill, correct? That's it's not a house bill. It's actually the Pennsylvania Bar Association, the attorneys are for, presenting. for HSUS and Federated Humane. Okay? okay. They're the ones that actually pass But it's the not laws. law. They're, they're just at this time proposing it. I am currently in the process and almost finished because this has gone long enough in Pennsylvania. We are actually circulating a petition for the entire state of Pennsylvania. Okay. To, to make it clear to me because 
I also have read mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I've read everything that's been shared with me. Um, when you come with the law, mm -hmm. I'd like to see it from the PA statutes or oh, the federal statutes. I gave PA statutes and federal okay, statutes. Okay, yes, but you also, you also at times mm -hmm. included with it things from alley cats and Well, of such. course, they're the ones that do it. Hold on. Go ahead. But when it becomes law, it goes into either a bill or a statute or something. I want it directly from that source, please. In the future, when we need. Did you? Well, I, and I'm just asking if you got one, yes. this. I have this that. is right here. This is the law I enforce. Okay. Yes, I and have. And unified federal just code. Just the sections you've given. Right. Well, I can't give you the whole book. That's that's all I have, and it was printed by the Pennsylvania Bar Association. But I did to give you one thing: the Code of Federal Reg Regulations, which is imperative in this ordinance. Okay. Because under federal law, under that federal code that I gave to, I, I know I emailed it to you, I know I emailed it to you, I know I've given it to Roger in the past, okay? Under federal regulations, there is no such thing as a feral cat, a free roaming cat. That's right. There is none. They are under, encompassed under one definition, feline domesticus. That's right. A cat is a cat is a cat. And in my jurisdiction, under the, the Title 18 of the Pennsylvania Crimes Code, a definition is in my jurisdiction that a cat is a domestic animal. Therefore, if federal law trumps state law, state law trumps local law, federal law says there is no feral community, stray, Tame, domestic, whatever. A cat is a cat is a cat. And that's what we have to understand. There is no clarity or there's no way to concisely say that's a feral, that's a tame cat, that's a drop off, that's a stray. They're all encompassed under federal code as one, a domestic cat. Therefore, when you full feed, pull a feeding station, you're actually violating 5532, 5533, and 5534 of the Crimes Code that I must enforce. It is abandonment, it is starvation, it is a deprivation of food. And the bottom line is, if it actually, and, and I would be more than happy, you can read it right now, or I can read it to you. No, if any, no. To sum it up, to sum it up, if there is any doubt that an animal can be put into imminent danger, that's the bottom line. And it is contradicted to think that there are woods on by that they'll get on their own. Cats don't leave once they do a colony. They don't like outsiders in. And you can have a house cat. You yourself said you rescued a cat. And I'm asking you this, be, all right, so you rescue two cats. You feed your cats every day. I did when they were alive. <clears throat> and I'm sorry for your loss. Did they ever catch a mouse? No. Not once? Not once. Once my cats came in, they didn't go near the door, and they only ate their food. Okay, well, you I have an exception to the rule. Okay. You have an exception to the rule, but I just want to prove one more point, and, and then I'll get out. How many cat owners do we have in here? How do your cat owners, you feed your cats every day? Yes. You give them water every day? Yes. How, raise your hand if your cat has ever gotten a mouse. Keep your hands up if the cat did not eat the mouse, but played with it and brought it to you. <laughs> there you go. They won't eat them. They become dependent on the human source. And once you have a cat dependent on the caretaker, you're not actually the owner. They're not actually the owner, but it actually is considered under caretakership. And these people that feed these cats don't want to break the law. They want to do something compassionate. Some of these elderly people, we have the senior for senior programs. Some of these people, that's the highlight of their day, to have a cat waiting at their door looking for something to eat. And they might not be able to hug them and love them and kiss them and throw the ball and, and do tricks and everything else, but that's all they got. And I would like to see them keep that. Amen. With rules, with standards, and with, with accountability. I do believe that if a colony is in Pomerden, 
the borough should know where it is. I have no discrepancy whatsoever in my mind. I believe that if they don't follow the rules of spay and neuter, rabies, if they become nuisance or anything, that they be held accountable with fines. We're not asking for a free pass. We're asking for a humane ordinance that works, that is not gonna jeopardize the life of the cat. Because after 12 years, I'm really tired of transporting cats and end-stage liver failure, jaundice, starvation, going into buildings. Donna Flynn Barney, where are you? 30 cats in a house. Window was open. And I, as I swear here today, we rescued how many alive? Five. And why? Because they were dependent and they became cannibalized. And I don't want to bring up that. That's all I'm going to say about it. That's what can happen. I don't want my grandkids walking down the street seeing starving cats. Simple as that. And you're never going to stop dropouts. You're never going to stop it. Unfortunately, I'd like to see 50 million people in, in the county be calling your animal control because they just saw a car with license plate number so-and-so just drop off a dog or drop off a cat. It, exactly. It happens. We're not going to stop it. But thank you very much for listening. I hope you're going to listen to the rest of them. Please keep an open mind, and hopefully we can... We can solve this thing and work together. We will. Thank you. I know all of you know who I am, so I will introduce myself to the crowd. I am Barb Greenswag. I am president of Palmerton Cat Project. I'm going to follow my notes um, rather closely because I think it's really important to, so you know who we are and what we've been doing in this community. My husband and I have resided within the borough of Palmerton for 35 years. In the fall of 2014, we began to address a long-standing problem of unfixed feral cats were breeding out of control the next block up. We began trapping, spaying and neutering, getting the cats their rabies and distemper shots. We were paying for it out of our own pocket initially. With the exception of the kittens who we were able to foster and rehome, these were not adoptable cats. Many were never touched by humans. Within a short period of time, we had neighbors joining us and saying, we'll help you, we know this is a problem. We were made aware of another large colony, only with another block away from us, and so we began the and continued the TNR, pulling the kittens and adopting them. This may be hard to believe because I live right in town on the 500 block of Lafayette Avenue, but we did 42 cats in that area. That's how bad the problem was. Um, word of mouth continued to spread. We were alerted to a number of colonies within the borough, outside of the borough of Palmerton. The largest was the industrial site we talked about. 72 cats we did there, 72. That was a task we could not afford to do our, with on our own. We didn't have the funds, simply didn't. Forgotten Felines partnered with us. We did it. It took Kristen and I a year and a half to trap every single cat in that colony. We know many of them by name. We now have our feeder. Where's our other feeder? We have two feeders who feed these cats. They're monitored. We pull them out. If there's a physical issue, we take them to the vet. We have a couple of different trapping mechanisms that we use. We are the master trappers. We may not have the papers, but we are the master trappers. And so um, colony caretakers that we work with receive not only support through the spay and neuter, but education and training, which is really critical here. And I believe this should be addressed, you know, this is why we're trying to address the concerns also that you folks are concerned about. We teach them how to properly feed and care for the colony. We don't want them to attract nocturnal animals. We want them to be able to identify and, and put out an alert if there's a health issue. We will go back in there, try to get the cats, get them taken care of. At times, we've had to have them euthanized. It is what it is. The goal is for all cats to be cared for until the colony is extinguished, no more remain, and the feeding ceases. The colony is gone. We met with the Palmerton Borough Council throughout the years on seven occasions to share concerns. We attempted to resolve this matter with you folks. 
We really wanted to see a trap neuter release program. In March of 2017, without consultation or any consideration, the council adopted Ordinance 728, which then made feeding cats a violation. And it does not address the unfettered breeding of free roaming cats. <coughs> The borough also supported the removal of unclaimed cats, dropping them at an uh, undisclosed location at a Lehigh County farm without protocol for microchip identification, spaying or neutering, or <coughs> updating rabies shots. It is critical to note, and I think Donna, you alluded to it, that colony cats do not allow newcomers to readily join the colony. They become their own unit. Um, they won't let them eat, a lot of times they will beat them up and they will die a torturous death. As I said in our meeting between, was that Thanksgiving and Christmas, I believe we met Roger, mm -hmm. Terry, <coughs> Mr. Garski, um, we would rather see them humanely euthanized than have them dumped at a farm. That's incredibly cruel, incredibly cruel. <clears throat> and this is precisely the reason why a properly managed colony is a humane response. We became a 501c3 in a nonprofit in 2016. We have a board of directors. We meet on a regular basis. We fundraise. We're completely self-supporting. The borough has never contributed one dime. Our service area is available to anyone in the Palmerton Area School District, but we provide guidance to anyone who reaches out to us. Is our Lansford folks here? Yes. Would you put your hands up? They're looking to do a program. They've watched what we've done. They're looking to institute something similar in the town of Lansford. We met with them a couple weeks ago. And it was a really, you know, we're here to support each other. I'd like to give you some statistics. In 2018, 52 cats were trapped, spayed or neutered, medically assessed, and given their shots by the Palmerton Cat Project. 39 abandoned cats and kittens were rescued, medically cleared, fostered, and subsequently adopted. 20 cats were provided with extraordinary medical care and support. We responded to four calls about injured or deceased cats. We shared numerous lost cat posts that resulted in many happy reunifications. We have networked with several area rescue organizations, our Carbon County Humane Society police officer, and we utilize the support of our area veterinary offices. At this time, I'd like to extend, on behalf of Palmerton Cat Project, a special thanks and appreciation to the Palmerton Police Department. They have reached out to us on several occasions to address cat concerns. Some of them have been very late at night, this is the kind of teamwork that promotes effective problem resolution. This is the type of compassionate, common sense engagement we are looking for from you folks, the elected officials of the Borough of Palmerton. We need to develop a trap and your release program to stop the proliferation of kittens and identify existing colonies. We need to work on a protocol for abandoned cats and strengthen and enforce the prosecution of those who do so. We at the Palmerton Cat Project and our supporters, we've had our sleeves rolled up. We've been doing the hard work here since the fall of 2014. And it sounds to me like you folks are ready to join us. In conclusion, to all of you here, on behalf of Callie and Thea, they were the two cats posted on our page, we had no idea the response would be so overwhelming. 58,000 people across the nation have viewed that post. It has been the most incredible outpouring of support I've ever seen. I've received emails, calls, messages from California, Florida, Michigan. Michigan, Maryland, <laughs> Texas, everywhere. I, I am so touched. And all of you folks came here tonight. You took time out of your busy schedule to be a voice for those that are voiceless. Thank you.
first of all, you are a good looking bunch of people. <laughs> I'm proud to be in your company tonight. My name is Sandra Buckhalter, B U C two H's A L T E R. 721 Lafayette. Thank you. Okay. Ladies, gentlemen, I am the second person that was cited. Last week I received the summons in the mail. And I'm like, what is this about? Did I forget jury duty or something? Or <laughs> Did I get a traffic violation? I'm 76 years old. I've never even had a traffic ticket. So then I sat down, I opened it up, and I'm like, my God, I'm getting fined for $123.25. And I'm like, for what? It said, for dogs, cats, whatever. Evidently, I have two cats who live in my yard. I moved to Palmerton, it'll be 10 years this coming May. And the first couple of years I was here, I noticed stray cats around. Now being an animal lover, I thought, I'm gonna trap them. So I went over here to Shay's hardware store. And I bought a trap, and I set it at the back of my yard. And weather permitting wasn't every night, but weather permitting, I would set it up and I would catch maybe one cat a week, one every other week. All told, I trapped 14 cats. And I took them to a low cost spay and neuter clinic <coughs> up on 209 in Broadheadsville, <coughs> where they were neutered. Their ear clipped, which shows that they are neutered or spayed, and they got their shots. And then I came back and I, well, let them loose. Two of them, I guess, figured they had a good thing going. <laughs> two men, two big tomcats, they refused to leave. I'm like, okay, I got a nice size yard. So I went out, I got a big igloo doghouse. Have it up against my house. Every year since then, I put fresh straw in it for them. I feed them, because I did not know there was a rule against feeding. I do not have a computer, so I am not up on all of your regulations. <coughs> and I feed them, and then, believe me, they don't leave anything in the dish when they're done. I bring the empty dish in till the next day. So then I was, like I said, horrified by this. I, I just, I don't understand it. I, I realize not everyone likes cats. Some people don't like dogs. Some old people like me, they don't like kids. They say, oh, kids, you know. <laughs> they're noisy, they're, <laughs> yeah, they don't appreciate anything so you don't spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> but, not me, but not every old one. But then there's people who don't even think like themselves. They're so full of hate, and they just want to pick on something small and vulnerable. And what is more vulnerable than a kitten or a cat? All they want to do is survive another day. So, like I said, I had to plead guilty when I went to uh, to sign this yesterday, no, the day before. So technically, I'm guilty of your violation, but I don't feel that I am guilty. I'm proud of what I did. I don't think I've done anything wrong, and, and I'm not just concerned about my two cats, I'm concerned about all the cats. And I said, all they want to do is see another day. All they want to do is see a meal and a nice bowl of water in the hot summer for something to drink. So, 
I hope, like with Barbara, we can all work this out. There is a better way, there is a humane way. Okay, thank you for hearing us. No, I'm not. No. I'm sorry. Um, prior to the summons coming in the mail, you knew no one had notified you ahead of time. No. Okay. Thank no. You. This was this was it. The mail lady rang the doorbell. Like I said, I didn't know what it was for. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to make sure. Of that. Yeah. Thank no. You. This was the first and only notice I got. Thank you. This phone call, sir. I live off the street from here. Not yet. Um, our, our enforcement officer doesn't drive up and down looking for uh, feral cats or not the term maybe, but he, someone has to complain. I heard that and I can't understand. I've known all these people for years. I do not know who it could be. And I'm, I'm hurt that someone could have complained. I don't understand. <clears throat> Three of my neighbors have animals, two have dogs, one has a couple of house cats, there's another one who don't have any. I hate to think it would be them, because we get along very well. But and I guess... But again, I said, we don't go around looking for right. this, okay? The ordinance is there to protect people. If there's an issue, then it has to be reported to Borough Hall. Borough Hall sends out the enforcement officer he investigates. Okay, I'm sorry he didn't contact you directly. Yeah, no, this was it. And yeah. I'm home, I'm retired. I'm home all the time. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, thank you. I'm Except sorry. when I go to visit my old 96 year old mother in the nursing home. Obviously, I'm not getting them tonight. Susie Yikes, spelled Y-A-I-C-H. Thank you. Sorry. 21 years ago, we decided to form this organization because there was a problem with roaming cats, with stray cats. There's a problem everywhere. It's not just Palmerton. It's not just Jim Thorpe. This happens in every community. What we started to do in Jim Thorpe was to do the TNR. We trapped the cats, got them spayed and neutered, got them inoculated, put them back on the property where they had been previously feeding. Those colonies no longer exist. TNR works. Trying to drive the cats out by starvation is not going to work. For one thing, starvation is a slow, agonizing death. And I ask you, is that in is that hum is that humane? No, it is not. It is very inhumane. Especially when there there are other solutions. Um, we have worked with so many people over so many years, and the number of cats, homeless cats, you would not believe is astron astronomical. Currently, at our shelter in Jim Thorpe, our population is now 167 cats. At Christmas time, it was over 220. So we do have a good success rate in adopting cats out. The only problem that we have is we would like to help some of the communities with the feral cats, but we are limited by our insurance that it is a liability <coughs> for us to take in a feral or wild cat. Most of our employees are not rabies vaccinated. And the reason for that is rabies vaccination is extremely expensive. So we cannot afford to vaccinate all of our employees. We just have some core employees like myself who do the TNR and that come in direct contact with the feral cats. Donna has some great ideas. Like she said, we're not here to fight you. We're here to work with you. We just want to do what's fair for the animals. I haven't been fighting for these cats for 21 years for nothing. 
I have cried rivers of tears and had my heart broken so many times over issues with cats. The abuse that I have seen over the years is indescribable and despicable, and that has to end. But my main thing that I wanted to say is TNR does work. And on behalf of our organization, we will be more than happy to come to some type of compromise with the borough of Palmerston in helping to find a resolution to this issue. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Martha Kahn, and I'm the president of No Nonsense Knittering, and we're based out of the Lehigh Valley, so I'm not a current resident here, but I did want to thank, this, this audience is full of fabulous volunteers in your community. They're doing work, hard work, for nothing. They're raising money, and they're providing services that many communities pay for. And the reason why I wanted to share a little bit with you is because as a spay-neuter clinic, which No Nonsense Neutering is, we contract with about 35 municipalities throughout our service areas. We have four locations. We start in have Allen. With the exception of the city of Allentown, we contract TNR services with every municipality in Leah County. We have five in Northampton County. We're picking up about eight in Berks <coughs> County. Lebanon, we're moving to Wilkes-Barre Scranton. Trap, neuter, and return has become the accepted way to control free-roaming community cats across the nation. So I have a list here, but what I'm suggesting is that all of your speakers are saying join everyone else who has used and will use trap, neuter, return as their way to control the feral cat population. Um, so I came with a little bit different of a twist. You've heard you have a great outpouring of community support here. What I wanted to do is share that other municipalities are making the same decision as you. They have the same situation as you. So I came with, you, you passed a feeding, uh, uh, an ordinance. I call it a cat ordinance. Most of the, organ the municipalities that we, we contract with don't have any kind of cat ordinance. But if they do, they do it because they need to have something to go to if a person in their community is not fixing and not vaccinating the cats they're feeding. So I personally don't have a problem with a cat ordinance. What we're suggesting that you do is amend the one you passed, which says, and I'm going to share the one, um, we contracted five years ago, May of 2014, with the Borough of Heller County. And it's a very, very simple ordinance that doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be complicated. Um, when, when the chief of police and Kathy Hartramp who is, was Borough, and she still is Borough Manager, called me to meet with them. She said, we have a problem, and well, I'd like you to meet with the Chief of Police, and we would like to come up with a solution. And they had already decided they didn't want to kill cats. They knew that trying to pull them out of the borough wasn't going to work. So we came up with a plan that the Chief of Police and their part-time animal control officer, who only did dogs, no cats, would identify to those of us that were trapping where the hot spots were. And there were, few, there were a lot of them. So when we started in May of 2014, the first thing we came up with is a very simple, as you will read here, their article. And it says here, it shall be unlawful for any owner of any cat to permit that cat to run free outside the residence of the owner keeper. <coughs> feeding of feral cats limited. They were very specific. If you're going to feed them, you're going to be in compliance with the trap, neuter, return program in this borough. <clears throat> and anybody that's doing this, if their traps are stolen, whatever, it goes on at the end of it. They support the trap, neuter, return program fully. So what's happened since 2014? 
2015 became the first full year that we, and we are computerized, so we can track the cats that come to our clinic. The first year, we had 248 cats coming out of the borough, TNR. Second year, 198. In two years, it's over almost 500 cats. This year, 2018, eight. So what that says, to see these folks have been doing this already and within five years we have seen a huge decline in the number of cats that needed to be fixed plus as you have in your audience you have people that are pulling kittens out they're not coming back into your borough they're being adopted they're going into homes any any friendly strays if you can do it you're getting them homes so we're taking those those cats off the street but the feral ones truly don't belong in a home, but they do and should be fixed. They should be vaccinated. We flea treat worm, tip their ear, so that the, the uh, police officers, if they get involved, your animal control officer knows that cat has been fixed and vaccinated. And that is the public safety part of it that's an important component of the Trap and Return Program. So all I'm here to say is I, I wanna thank this community because you guys are really fortunate to have the people standing behind me here that are doing the heavy lifting for this borough. And they're not asking you to put a dime to it. These, these municipalities are paying. They're not asking you to do that. They're just asking you to give them the ability to do it legally for the community. Thank you very much. trucks over the years for being overweight. Excuse me. Yes. Can you say your name, please? My name's Grace Breyer. I live on Mount Trump Road. I do know that you are siding the trucks. But what are you going to do to fix our road? It is horrible. It's leaned over towards the hill. When I go down that road, if there's no traffic, I will be honest with you. I drive in the center of the road. I'll say this much. We, we have addressed the P on that. We have a, we've been working with uh, State Representative Hefley, uh, State Senator Edichak's office regarding that. We have tried to meet with um, members of North Face uh, Development regarding that. Uh, their response is they're not responsible for the trucks. However, I can tell you that we will pursue that issue and uh, Almost, to the highest extent there of the were law. many roads in Palmerton that were taken care of, but Mont Chunk has been one of the worst roads. I, I and agree. Nothing it's, was and it's, it's, it. it's off, and we agree. It is as a result of, of overweight trucks. And we don't feel 
we should have to pay for it. But why am I paying so taxes? We are, we will, who's going to pay for it? Use help I'll, take care of our roads. Well, the courts will probably all take the side. So, mm -hmm. so it's not that your issue is being ignored? We agree. We, we agree, agree that percent. they are we ruining, agree. they are ruining our roads. We spent a lot of time fighting on this. Uh, yeah. It's horrible. It's, it holds you. It's going to take some time to work out, but know that we are aware of it. I hope so because it's a couple years down, yeah. and it's only getting worse until someone yeah. actually gets worse. <clears throat> All right. Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Right, I'm not sure. Back here. I have a question. My name is Kim. That um, <coughs> in uh, what they call phase four. Phase, phase three. Phase three. How long is this going to continue with that? They're going to be bringing the soil, and is this soil, whatever they're bringing, monitor? What kind of stuff are they bringing into this area? Uh, Recently, uh, phase three environmental was was cited to 37. I think it was Correct. a violation. <laughs> violation. Uh, the borough here had sent a letter to DEP uh, asking them not to renew the, the permit uh, for the, not only for the violations, but we have a, we have a, uh, some litigation going on over a, uh, over a situation out there. Uh, we asked them to not renew the permit until we were made whole. Uh, there are a number of issues there, and uh, they went and they renewed the permit again, saying that the permit was not a new submit of, uh, submission, but it was a renewal. Uh, we are talking with Senator Duchak and, and uh, Representative Hathaway, uh right now, we're, but DEP really put this town against the wall. Uh, in that, if they would have had input from this municipality, we would have had these people post a bond whereby we could fix Highland Road, uh, this, that, and the other thing. But right now, they left us high and dry on, on that deal. And, uh, the only way that we're going to end up getting anything out of them is probably to bring litigation against the corporation. What kind of soil is being brought? <coughs> I'm, I'm not a chemist. I, I can't really tell you. Supposedly it's monitored soil. <coughs> uh, Are, how high were they allowed to actually put on? How high were they supposed to go? Was it 10 feet, 15 feet? 14 feet originally, I thought. Someone, from what I've heard, may get wrong, said it's at least 30 feet, okay. if not higher. Well, so isn't Homerton also <coughs> monitoring what's going on there? Well, well yeah, nothing happens. to do with, with that whole thing other than it's in the, in the borough of Farmington. But you have an enforcer that goes out and looks at all different areas of <coughs> issues. What you're driving by that and seeing, it's 20 feet higher than what it should be. Isn't that something he should be confronting you with and saying, we have a problem here. What do we do to correct this and stop it? Then DEP gave them this permit. It is in Palmer. I just got finished telling you, we weren't even into this permitting business that, or, or we would have had them post a bond on it, this uh, whole thing. There's some issues out there, but this, community and municipality had absolutely nothing to do with it. Yes, they they came to us and said, we'd like to do this project. We said, yes, we, you know, that's all right, fine. DEP came in and gave them the permit and, and they're doing all of the, supposedly the monitoring, the uh, uh, site. Uh, Does Palmerton Borough keep any track of what how many loads or whatever is going in there? I know you're saying DP, I know the question. So really, for us to find out anything, you're saying I have to contact DEP. I don't want to see this become a super site fund. No, that's that's not that's not. Someone not also said here. about something about a water station. There is issues. Is that true? 
I, I'm sorry, I was trying to listen. Someone to said there was an issue about a water station that the ground is so high that the borough will have issues if there's a problem. Is that true? I would say no. Um, there's a, a water well out there, and that's being addressed <coughs> as far as that goes. So, uh, you know, we have. We have input because we own the, the industrial water and the portable water that is on that site. The tax to that is, that's all we have. Do we realize <coughs> the farmer city itself that the ground they're bringing in, that state of New Jersey, it does not meet their criteria, so they don't want it. And with them putting it there, when we have heavy rains like we've had, that water is going to run off. That water is going to land up in our leak height and our the water. How is that going to affect Palmerton in the end? It's my understanding that when they issued the permit for phase three environmental, uh, that none of the rainwater would run off of that site. Now, uh, that being said, whether it does or it doesn't, I don't know, but I, I don't have any control of that. And that was part of the reason that we're in litigation with them right now, and I'm not at liberty to talk right. too much as, about this. As litigation. a community, we need to look out for each other because we have all complained about the Dignity for years, killing this, killing that. Well, now we're bringing in ground where there's definitely issues. Well, you know, I'm not going to say that we're not going to be My understanding is that. Is, is that in Pennsylvania, the criteria is different than in, in yes. New York me if I'm wrong, yes. than in New York and New Jersey. Yes. So, so that's not, we don't decide that right. as a borough. That's that a, I understand. Yeah, that falls yes. on the department. But I still look at us, yeah. what we saw in the past, right. as a suicide, yes. yeah. and you're bringing trouble in the trouble. And I'm concerned with the wild. I'm concerned. I live there. You know, I, so I'm going to read that. One suggestion that I have, you had alluded to this, <coughs> I would suggest you contact the EP. I mean, uh, give them a call, write them, write them whatever. Uh, if you call the borough office here, we can give you that information as far as whatever you need. Okay. Uh, call the borough office there and we'll do that. That would probably be beneficial uh, and help help the borough here. Well, I will do that. As, as well as contact the uh, representative Hempley's office as well as Senator <coughs> Dijak's office because they do have uh, input. Well, I'm concerned with all of us, you know, not yeah. just myself, but everyone. And believe me, we are too. Yeah. We, we've been fighting this issue for several years now and uh, Trying to work with. Uh, there was something on TV. I was over there. It was on TV where he said, as the citizens of Palmerton, he'd be quite upset with what's going on there. Well, as broke, I can tell you, as borough council members, when we've had meetings with DEP, yeah. we were very set, upset and we were very harsh with them. That's all I can tell you. But we've so had numerous meetings in Wilkes Fair. We've had meetings here in the borough. Um, and, and believe me, we're frustrated. So it's maybe to bring the community together. To well, it helped. I mean, the, the more phone calls that are made, they hear from other people and just, just us. We are working on that. There's no question in my mind. Yes. yes, about this soil. Those of you over a certain age may remember something that occurred up in New York State outside of Niagara Falls. It was called Love Canal. I'm almost as old as you. <laughs> <laughs> you younger people, look up on your computers about Love Canal. What it was, it was ground outside of Niagara Falls and chemicals and bad soil were brought in, leveled off, and a year or two later, they built houses on it. 
I believe it was hundreds of houses. I'm not talking about a little group. They built these beautiful ranch houses, very reasonably priced. It was a lot of young families bought it because they were, could afford this. They wanted a nice new home for their children. Well, what happened over the years, this soil was so contaminated, they noticed the cancer rate went sky high and it was affecting mostly the children. <clears throat> it turned out that almost every house in this community had at least one person either already died of cancer or <clears throat> was suffering from cancer, children were getting leukemia, and of course, the people who dumped this, they denied it. There was one woman, a young mother, and she went and she investigated. She went from house to house, kept records, and they even made a movie about this. Uh, actress Marsha Mason played the part. And what happened in the long run, they had to come in, contaminate, uh, close the whole thing down. The whole area was closed off, high cyclone fences, the people were reimbursed for what they paid for the houses, but they had almost all lost family members to cancer because of this contaminated <coughs> soil. And it stayed that way, it was eerie. The movie with Marsha Mason, at the end of the movie, it showed the real houses, it was in black and white. There, there's some other people in the back here I'd like to speak too. Okay, I've done the I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off there. I understand what you're telling us, but there's, there's, there's some other people back here. Right? So like I said, this is <coughs> bad what they're doing. <laughs> started that stuff with the zinc company over there. I tested almost the lethal, like over the limit, on lead, cadmium, arsenic, and zinc. I took videos, and I have had in 30 years 14 animals that have died from cancer, and I asked the vet specifically, what am I doing wrong? Different breeds, different, they came from different places, different food, etc., etc. They said, check your water. So technically, I'm checking the water. But on another quick note before we leave, Thursday at 6.30, we can all make it if you guys can. So we figured we just wanted to throw that on the record quick. Thursday at 6.30. If that works for you, we are available. Okay. I would, I would also like to say one other thing. I think I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Gersky at the last meeting we had. Uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas. At that time, I think we were able to give you a lot of information. I feel it's really, 
it's really imperative that everybody who's going to be voting on these issues meet with us in small groups. We've met numerous times. We've met numerous times. We've met numerous times in three years. All of you need to be informed to make a good decision. That's what we would really like to see happen. And I'm retired now. So.